am I? I'm Teal Hansen. My dad is Mike Weber, and my grandparents are Bill and Irene Weber. We're here in Cordova, Alaska at Alonco Culture Center, and today I will walk you through our museum. Here we have an Exxon shame pole carved by my dad, Mike Weber, in 2007 on the 18th anniversary of the Exxon oil spill. Kadek Tez, which translates to shame pole and clink it, were used to embarrass and mock people who owed society. At the top, the upside down face of Exxon's now retired CEO, Lee Raymond, spills oil out of his mouth. His infamous words, we will make you whole, are in the oil slick. On the sides, you'll see a few animals that were affected by the oil spill, including the herring, which has yet to recover. Here at the bottom, we have our people linking arms in unity and strength with a hole in their heart. Lady Justice is in the center, who is blindfolded to the 18 years of legal entanglement that have failed to bring an end to this oil spill litigation. At the bottom, you'll see a clinket styled person who is crying one tear for every year. These eating utensils were carved out of bone. In the back, we have fishing hooks made out of ivory. A little weight. This is sinew here. Another one over here. This is a needle inside with a needle case, also made out of ivory, and a toothpick. This wood cooking bowl was found at an abandoned village at Makarka Point on the north side of Hawkins Island. The bowl was used for cooking by filling it with boiling water. Natives of this area would boil water by setting the fire hot rocks inside the water bowl, and then they would use the boiling water to cook. This seal gut parka was also found at Makaka Point. The seal intestines were stitched together with sinew and dried grass to make the seams waterproof. They were worn by hunters and travelers to keep them dry. This Eyak dugout canoe was made by Gus Nelson. Fires may have been used to help fall the trees. Fires were also used to hollow out the canoe. The fires were placed in the center and kept away from the edges with sticks. The charred wood would then be hollowed out with adze. Water was then placed inside the canoe and brought to a boil by fire hot rocks. The sides were pushed out and kept in place with supports. This is Chief Peter Chmiewski. He is the last chief of New Czech. The next four paintings were done by Jen Ann Kirschmeyer. These elders were all from Cordova. This first one is Big Uppa, Carol Komkoff. This one is Xena Barnes. And then Sophia Brodkin. This last painting depicts Cordova in the 1920s, showing the melting pot that it really was. These are different native houses along Eyak Lake. You can really see all of the cultures that were mixed in there by all of the different canoes and kayaks that are shown. The natives from this area were the Eyak, the Etna, the Klinket, the Chugach, and the Sukviak. These next three paintings I actually painted. This first one is Bob Maxwell. He's a longtime Cordova fisherman. This next one is titled Exhaustion. It's a wedge canvas placed up near the ceiling and looking down on the viewer. This is supposed to help depict the feeling of mental and emotional exhaustion that a fisherman feels. On the right-hand side of the wedge, you will see a fisherman rowing a seine net. Back when my papa was fishing, they did not use skiffs to pull the seine net off the boat. They had to row the net off the boat themselves. The right-hand side of the painting shows a picture of myself in the skiff, resting my head in my hands, just like this forward-faced painting. This last one is of my grandma, Irene Weber. She is a longtime Cordova resident. She was born in Elamar, which is an abandoned Sukbiak village near Tatitlik in the Veldi's arm. My grandma I started running again in her 40s after she sobered up. She traded one unhealthy addiction for another healthier addiction. She was a short 5'2 woman who ran her first marathon in 1986 in her 40s on a dirt road. My grandma started the Salmon Runs to promote a healthier lifestyle. Her motto, see you on the road, inspired just that. In the spring of 2016, I visited her in the hospital in Anchorage. Alzheimer's was finally taking its toll. My grandma I was a very big flirt and I had asked her how many boyfriends she already had in the hospital. She paused and made a face like they were all such a burden on her. She goes, hi, ah, yeah, 78. I quickly snapped the photo when she was laughing with me afterwards. Thank you for watching this video. 
If you'd like to see more artifacts, please stop into Alonco Culture Center's museum and gift shop. We have a variety of handmade items by local artists, including seal, sea otter, and sea lion skin sewing by Gloria Cunningham and Diana Rydell, beadwork by Christine Belgard, jewelry by Gloria Cunningham, Melina Meyer, and Sean O'Brien, and prints by Katie Moffat, Mark Hoover, and Pat McGuire. We also have more merchandise featuring Alaska Native designs. Kriana again for watching this video. Alaska Culture Center wishes you a Merry Christmas.